Making Necron Terrain continues as I build my Necron Bridge for this year's Terrain Square Bridge competition. Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right, another update on me building my bridge for this year's Terrain Square Bridge Competition. Before that though, if you would like to keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40k, then please give me a sub and hit the bell button so you don't miss an upload. Okay, so one week has passed of our eight weeks to build our bridge for this year's Terrain Square Competition. Now if you haven't heard of the competition yet, I'll link you up to the information video just there. Check it out if you haven't already. We've got three awesome prizes for the competition sponsored by War Games. And if you haven't checked out War Games website yet, then please do so, www.wargamesuk.co.uk. Okay, so I spent the first week of the build working out all of my ideas for the bridge. I now have my final concept and I want to run through my concept ideas and also some of the work that I've already done on the bridge. So let's go straight table down and have a look at my work. Okay so here is the bridge at the moment and I'm really looking forward to showing you some of the ideas and concepts that I've come up with. Okay, so first of all, I've cut the three pieces of foam board to the right size. Now these aren't glued or anything, they're just resting on top of the pillars. I've got them slightly overhanging the edge here, and of course I've got to join them together. I'm probably going to use a piece of foam board underneath to glue them both on on each side. Uh, so that's where I started, and then I had to sort of visualise this bridge on the table. So I decided that I didn't want any steps going up and down as such. I mean, this is going to be a Necron board, and Necrons like to teleport. So that was my first idea. I thought, okay, rather than having sort of a stepway or a gangway up, how about making it so the models can teleport up and down from the table? And that took me straight to the green templates. Okay, so here are the templates. So first of all, of course, there's a big hole in the middle of the template, so I had to find something to hide the hole. I had to look in my bits box, couldn't really find anything in my Necron bits box. However, I found my laser cuts card box. That's the off cuts for the laser cut card stuff that I've used on a lot of my other terrain. I'm gonna talk about laser cut card a little bit more as we move through the video because I've got some other stuff that I want to show you. Uh, but yeah, first of all, I made some little base toppers for these. So they're just normal 25 millimeter bases with the laser cut card Necron symbol on. Now I think they're gonna hide the little holes quite nicely and also make them a little bit more Necron-esque. Now in terms of using them, I thought I had two options. One option would be to have one of these on the top, like so, maybe one at the bottom. And then your models could just walk onto this platform and then they can teleport to the top. So I thought that was usable. I could potentially have the big one for units of 10, maybe the small one for single models or units of five, something like that. So that was one idea I had, but I do have a second idea. I think I like the second idea a little bit better. So the second idea would be to have two of these on top of the bridge, like so, and then these would be for the two opponents. You could have one of these each, and you can place these anywhere in your deployment zone. One say on that side, one on that side, and then during the game, each turn maybe, you could teleport one unit up onto the bridge and you can choose which one you want. Obviously this would have to be vacant with no one on there. So it could be a good way to sort of almost force people to play on the bridge. You could teleport units of warriors for example up there and then the blood angels could teleport their death company up there or something. Uh, so that was the couple of ideas that I had. I could make it on a dice roll so say you can only teleport up there if you rolled a four, five or six. Something like that, obviously some nice house rules could really make this bridge quite playable. So once I had the idea that I'm gonna have no steps up and down, I had to work out how I was gonna end both sides of the bridge. So I always knew that on this end, I was gonna have this sort of broken, so I could have this damaged like it was bombed out, and at the bottom have a piece of rubble type terrain. So the bridge is gonna take up the whole of the board going right the way across in a diagonal. Now as for the other end, just here, I had a few options. One option was to literally have it hard up against the edge, 
so it looked like the bridge was just going off of the board uh, but it made the other end quite short and I really wanted this bridge to take up the whole of the board so I thought well how about I have like a tomb section where the bridge is coming out of now I don't necessarily want to make a tomb as well as a bridge so I thought how about I use one of my tombs that I've already got in particular this piece of terrain here now this makes it into my battery ports because we like to put the turn dice on the top of it now funnily enough this is just by chance but it fits exactly on the top of that bridge now I could put it on top of the top of the bridge right at the end maybe something like this but I was thinking how about I make like a little box section for it to stand on in other words making the tomb taller and bigger and have it right on the end so effectively the bridge will start from this tomb section coming all the way out and obviously be broken the other end so that was the concept that I came up with for the actual design so now I was going to have a look at some of the finer details okay so now I started to have a look at the edge of the board and of course you've got to have some sort of barricade there to stop anyone falling off so I came up with these little edges first of all but I decided they were way too big I wanted to have the men standing on the bridge being able to shoot down vice versa of course shooting up so I actually cut these in half and I also cut out a little edge section because I want this to be over here because it will look a lot neater so let me show you those okay so here they are so first of all yeah I cut them down the middle and then I cut this little ridge off uh, so basically making a five millimeter in depth step just going across and then also cutting it along here and the idea is that I can hide this edge just at the top of the bridge which I'm going to show you now okay so there they are they're just lightly balanced on there um, I didn't do all six of them just because they kept falling off but I managed to get three on there just to give you an idea of how the lip is going to look so it's not too prominent um, but I think it's high enough just to indicate that obviously there's a barricade there. Now I know I was going to consider putting some of the bits from this ghost arc onto the sides just to try and make it a little bit more necronish. However, I have disregarded that. This kit is going to be safe, which means I hopefully can convert it into a tesseract arc at some point. So if I'm not going to use this, what am I going to use? Well, let me show you. Okay, so some of you may have seen this on my channel before and some of you may not have done, but this is my laser cut card defense line. Now, laser cut card currently have their website closed. It's just about to be relaunched and they've got a fantastic range of cyborg terrain on there, or at least they will have when it's launched. Now, you can check out laser cut card on Facebook. They have a Facebook page and any information regarding the new website will be listed on the Facebook page. However, um, I have reviewed quite a bit of laser cut card products previously, including, of course, this defense line. Now, Neil from Laser Cut Card not only sent me an actual defense line to review, but just as a nice gesture, because he had one spare, he gave me the prototype defense line that he had. So let me show you that. Okay, so basically this is how it comes, uh, just on cardboard, you just cut it out. As I said, this is the prototype. It has a slightly more complicated design than the final product. However, I have built some of these before. I actually used some of these on the Train Square Circle piece that I did two years ago. Um, and I had a count up. I've got a reasonable amount of these left. I've just built one, just there. So I've got one there. And what I was thinking was, they could make great in between sections for the bridge to go on the sides so let me show you what I mean okay so that is what I'm sort of thinking of if I have one of those here splitting up the barricade going across now obviously my strips at the moment are quite long but imagine now I'm not sure exactly how many of these I've got I'll have to obviously add them up and start building them but if I evenly space these out going across the top of the bridge there I think that will make it quite necronish what I'm going to do is just set them up just so you can get a quick feel of how they're going to look okay so I'm just going to go freehand for this one I want you to see this as I can see it so yeah just imagine those running alongside the side of the bridge there obviously with the barricade in between there and then if I come around this side both sides having that, things are going to look really good, that obviously tomb standing up on some sort of platform on the edge of the bridge 
and then on this end that's going to be all rubble and ruins with an extra piece of train I'll just pop on the bottom there so it's literally going to go from corner to corner. Uh, just on a side note this mat in case you're wondering is from Deep Cut Studios it's actually their Gotham mat so thank you Deep Cut Studios for sending me this mat which I previously reviewed. Okay so there's one last thing now that I want to talk about now the last thing that I needed to talk about was these. These were the crystals that I showed you in the previous video. And I was thinking about using these on top of the bridge. Now one of the crystals, this big one here, actually illuminates it, flashes green. Uh, but it's got this quite big power pack to operate it. Not really a problem, except obviously that needs to be embedded in a piece of terrain. And that was one reason why I was thinking about having these crystals on top of the bridge. Uh, a, to give it a little bit more of a Necron fill, and B, because then I might be able to embed those batteries into one of the pillars. So I was thinking if I had this crystal on the top here, and then I can cut a big hole out of this pillar, embed the battery device in the pillar, and make a little like uh, cover, like a lid, so I can just take the lid off, get inside to change the batteries or turn the batteries on, this of course would be embedded into the piece of foam so you won't see any of that base you'd only see the actual crystals themselves sort of poking out um, but I'm not 100% convinced on having these crystals on the bridge I think this is possibly where I'm going to be asking for some feedback from you guys it could look pretty cool I think to have some crystals on here it almost will give you some terrain on top of the bridge I mean imagine warriors teleports up here Death Company teleports up there. At least you've got some sort of bit of a cover there, maybe to get, try and hide your men a little bit. Um, but yeah, what do you think? Do you think I should have the crystals on the top of the bridge? I'm undecided at the moment. I think it will look cool, but I'm not 100% sure. Of course, I do have the option to paint these crystals, um, but then that means that the flashing one, probably you're not going to be able to see it flashing. So. You know, that is another option. Maybe forget the flashing idea, embed them into the terrain uh, and repaint them. Or not repaint them, but to paint them up as opposed to having them this bright green colour. So some feedback would be much appreciated regarding the crystals. I hope you like the build and I look forward to your comments. Beam me up.